Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we speak to Nigerian artist Ken Wadobu. A Mozambican dance studio aims to empower women through dance, and a Kenyan rapper is requiring voter registration cards to get into his concerts. Let's get on with the show. And we begin the show in Maputo, Mozambique, where a dance studio aims to improve self-confidence and to empower women. And we talked to the founder and instructor of Own It, Nilsa Ribeiro, who told us the studio wants women to reclaim their power in society. A place where joy is a constant, women feel really safe, and through dance, they express their emotions and release all fears. This is Own It, a dance studio created by Mozambican Nilsa Hibero, who aims to bring up women's self-confidence. Here she welcomes women of different age groups, some with tough backgrounds and in need of emotional support to boost their self-esteem. Own It. The best description of Own It is female empowerment. The name Own It already carries this idea of taking the lead, taking something as your own. You own it. The name brings this idea of women taking back what is already theirs and taking it as their own, taking control of their position, taking control of their power, taking control over their body. Gain bodily self-awareness. Gain self-awareness of your ability, your position to shine, to lift society and make society evolve. More than 200 women have already taken classes here. They have weekly sessions and weekend sessions. This session, the women learn an entire choreography and then they have the challenge where they are subjected to being filmed. Filming is a way of showing them that they were able to learn a choreography from start to finish and enjoy what they are seeing. It's a way to bring up their self-esteem. Each class works as a therapy for women. Whoever passes by testifies that it's not just about moving the body, but about knowing yourself and their smiles stamped on their faces already prove the results. I feel like this is a place of trust, to have your feet on the ground, to look at ourselves and believe in ourselves. I can do it. When we get here, we don't know what's the next step. And when we come here, we learn the step and have time to retain that information. It's as if we were retaining that information for our day-to-day -day as well. I'm not sure about the step I'm going to take tomorrow, but I'm going anyway, and I'm going to learn. Self-confidence. Believe yourself. Failing is part of the process. Dancing is part of it. You won't get the choreography right away. You will fail the first. You can fail the second. But persist and believe. Yes, you can. Failure is part of the process. Only those who do nothing do not fail. Nilsa counts on the collaboration of two more teachers and her husband, who is responsible for the image of Own It. Today, the plan is to grow the initiative and continue to impact many women through dance. And let's head to Nigeria where a troupe called the Incredible Kids is giving underprivileged youth in Abuja a way to transform their lives through dance. Let's have a look. As a disabled child growing up in Nigeria, Joshua Anum did not see internet stardom in his future. He and his eight siblings, abandoned by their father, barely had enough to eat. Now, the 15-year-old who lost his left arm at age 5 after falling out of a tree is part of a dance group called the Incredible Kids. Before I joined this team, I partied a lot and I was always fighting. I didn't go to school. But since I joined this dance group, I now go to school. I read and I dance and I don't do all those negative things anymore. 
The troupe perform fast-paced routines to popular Nigerian songs. They have become a hit online with a growing Instagram following and a packed performance schedule. The children live with dancer Maliki Emmanuel, the group's founder, on the outskirts of Nigeria's capital Abuja. Most come from difficult family situations and found refuge with him. The group has performed in Abuja and Lagos and their fame grows. Emmanuel said he hopes their numbers will too. I'm looking at taking more kids, but I want these ones to grow first. When we've created the brand, let the brand big, then we can recruit more kids. Kids that are on the street that doesn't have what they are doing, that have the talent of dancing, or some that wish to dance, that love dance, I can teach them, then we'll bring them to the crew also. Joshua's mother, Vera Anu, said she despaired when his arm had to be amputated at the age of five after he fell off a mango tree. People at home just say, oh, his own has finished you because somebody who just would hand is amputated from childhood. What can he do? The proceeds from their performance cover school fees for Joshua and other dancers. And now to some art news. In recent years, Africa's art market has seen unprecedented growth due to an increase in interest by local and international collectors. Now, this global attention can be measured in the number of art exhibits featuring African art held by world-famous galleries in major cities like London. Art collectors say that as much as they are interested in traditional African art, there has been more focus in contemporary African art created by either emerging digital artists or well-known painters and sculptors. So, how do you define African art? Let's take a look. Is African art art that looks like African art or is African art art that comes from Africa? And that's a very huge conversation and it's a huge debate that uh, many art historians, many art critics and institutional bodies are actually having now. African art is basically art that comes from Africa and basically not the aesthetics of the art because the aesthetics of the art can be whatever the artist choose to display on the canvas and value comes from the conversations that is being you know, shared on the canvas. That is Ken Wadobu, a young Nigerian artist based in Lagos. In Nigeria, one of the most vibrant art markets on the continent, young artists like Ken are attracting global attention because of how they are using new art forms to reframe old narratives about their communities. Ken is currently holding his first solo exhibition in his home city of Lagos. He says that his exhibition titled A Different Perspective seeks to tell a different side of the story often told about Lagos. My current exhibition is titled A Different Perspective and it's basically just giving us an idea that you cannot completely understand a story by just looking at one perspective. You have to actually you know, consider other perspectives of that story before you can get the truth out of that story. So a different perspective is like a conversation about what Lagos is, what Nigeria is, how we live in Nigeria. And it's telling you that, you know, there is one story about corruption and the rest about what you think of Africa and Nigeria. But there's another story about the lifestyle, how we live, how we love, how we come in together. And that's what I was trying to show in this, in this exhibition. The exhibit is a series of paintings inspired by Ken's experiences growing up in Nigeria. But as thousands of young Africans his age embark on a risky voyage to cross the Mediterranean on their way to Europe each year, he not only wishes to start a conversation about the complexities of the migrant crisis, but to also bring attention to black voices across the diaspora that are influencing global culture. He calls his art technique contemporaryism. So contemporaryism is basically contemporary art and hyperrealism because I love the concept of hyperrealism, the idea of creating something real, right, on a paper or on a canvas or whatever medium you use. Right? And still, I like the fluidity that contemporary art gives. So I decided to, you know, put, see how I can merge these two ideas together to form like a new idea. I decided to call myself contemporaryism because I realized that a lot of people did not know who I was. <laughs> people called me hyperrealist. People called me. Um, there was just a lot of um, 
January of art that I was practicing in different news um, outlets. So I decided, you know what, let me just, you know, save everybody the stress and actually just coin a word called contemporary realism, which basically, when you think about it institutionally, actually has a, a very big impact on, on the way we look at hyper realism and the way we look at contemporary art as well. Even though painting is the focus of Nwadobu's art, the centerpiece of his current exhibition is his new installation, Jesus of Lubeck, which reflects upon the history of slave trade and the migration of present day. And now to some music news. When the war in Ukraine started, composer and cello player Ian Maskin immediately spoke up, condemning Russia's aggression. Today, Malskin, who is of Russian descent, is touring the U.S. performing in a series of concerts to raise money to help Ukrainian children. Anjarina Bagsarian has the story narrated by Anne Rice. When it became too difficult to choose words to describe the war in Ukraine, composer and cello player Ian Moxon put his feelings into music. The famous composer, who is of Russian descent, embarked on a series of charity concerts through the U.S. to raise money for Ukrainian children. The world fell apart, my own world and the world around me. I literally had to put it back together piece by piece. Maxin says he couldn't remain indifferent and act as though nothing had happened. When it comes to musicians, the majority are afraid they will lose their audience. I made my choice on day one, and I lost all my Russian audience and the chance to perform in Russia. But I didn't hesitate for a second. The funds raised from Moxin's concerts will go directly to Ukrainian foundations. For Angelina Bogdasaryan in Los Angeles, California, Anna Rice, VOA News. And we close the show with some music news from Kenya. One of Kenya's hottest rappers is requiring voter registration cards to get into his concerts in a bid to excite voters about this August election. But it's not working. East Africa's economic powerhouse has been one of the region's most vibrant democracies, but voters are disillusioned by years of broken campaign pledges and corruption scandals. Registration drives have netted fewer than half of the new voters targeted, one of the worst performances since the advent of multi-party democracy in 1992. Octopizo, one of Kenya's hottest artists, rapped about the celebrity high life at a concert in the western Kenyan city of Eldoret. The event was part of his Omechukua campaign aimed at convincing young people to vote in August elections that will choose a successor to outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta and thousands of local and national representatives. Rapper Octopizo, legal name Henry Ohanga, grew up in the patchwork of rusted corrugated iron shacks in the giant Kibera slum in the capital Nairobi. He sympathizes with voter frustration but still pleads with people to vote. For us is giving them the understanding that this is the power that the most power you'll ever have as a young person or as a registered voter that you have a power to fire and hire. You know, and that's, that power is, has not been told to us. We just think, yeah, you go vote, you go home. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jackson Fungani. For more entertainment news, check us out at voanews.com. We are also on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube where you can watch our videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone.